night, everybody. And Audio Missile Podcast is back. We're here with our friend Caesar the Leon again. What's up, Caesar? What's up, Felipe? What's up, Cordell? Thank you. Thank you for helping out, Cordell. How you doing? What up? What up? It's been a crazy uh, month. Uh, we had a couple mass shootings. Uh, Ten people died in uh, at the King Super in Boulder, and then we also had a, a couple massage spotters that were shot a week prior to that. So you know what I didn't tell you, bro? Uh huh. That was my friend's roommate at Boulder. The that one. got shot. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, on so Facebook. Oh, and, you know, yeah, I didn't. It's just so sad. And oh, she was wow. a nice person. She would help people. My buddy would just do food drives all the time. That you know? happens. It always happens that somebody who's really nice, there's like a horrible person, and the nice person will always die. And the horrible person will live fucking forever. Oh, it's so well, our sad. condolences go out to all the family and friends and everybody, yeah. relatives of the people that died. But we're not going to talk about that today because we've been hearing about that all week on the news and every day. So we're going to lighten up the mood. Uh, lighten? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Lighten with Biden. And tell us about it, Cordell. Well, you know, it's it's been, uh, you said a wild month. It's been a wild week as well, filled with lightning, lightning strikes. Remember we did all those episodes about lightning back in the day? Yeah. Um the, we were talking about the Washington Monument and how it had like the lightning had melted the crown on it, the original crown. Yeah, it's been struck so many times, and and that underneath the Washington Monument was a pool of water, and then the elevator shaft would co- conduct the lightning down to the ground to tr- you know discharge it, you know. So, but there's been some lightning strikes, you know, going around, you know, unfortunate, some tragic stuff, but. You know, four different uh, lightning strikes this week alone. Like the first one I'll talk about is Bridget. Just this week. Just this, Just this week. week. Yeah, we ain't talking, talking about, about the about month. The, oh, We're talking about the week. This week alone. <laughs> yeah. I, All right. You know, the first one was Bridget Hines, uh, Tuscumbia, Alabama. You know, and she uh, was getting ready to go on an errand. And she was outside and uh, lightning struck a pole. And it didn't strike her directly, but she even felt the electricity so bad she jumped in the air and started like doing this jumping running thing to try to get to her porch you know what i'm saying because every time she stuck to ground it's like (laughs) oh wow yeah so yeah because it doesn't necessarily have to hit you directly to kill you it could hit around you you know if you're on water it'll it'll conduct it and it'll shock you and and on the same day a policeman in mars hill alabama he actually did get struck and they had to take him to the hospital. He was burned and he's on life support right now. Do they know what caused this? Was it his badge? You know, <laughs> right. Oh. I, I don't know. I'm just saying. What? what, what, what no, it struck the police. It struck the police. He was out there doing like barricades or something, you know, police on the road, you know, some kind of traffic things. And he got struck. But, you know, even, even another one that's even more wild is in Seattle. Your old stomping ground there. My boy, uh, a plane. Lightning went through the plane to straight to the ground, scaring the passengers. None of them were hurt, you know, and, and it turns out that planes are built. It went right through the plane? Through the plane, you know, so planes are built to so withstand gotta, lightning bolt. Wait, I, wait I did it make a hole? up in the air. It didn't make a hole? No, no, what happens is it goes on the exterior of the plane and it discharges and goes into the air. It, wow. And it happens every year to most of the planes in the air. It's like the one, like the building in Saudi Arabia you were talking about last time. Yeah. The tall building. Oh yeah. It has uh, stuff that shoots the lightning. Wiz Khalifa. Yeah, that one, the tallest building in the world. Mm-hmm. When it, the sensors know when lightning's coming down and it sends up its own electrical spark and catches it in the air. Like, zzz, I'm just saying. All I know is um, <laughs> I, I worked six years as a New York City lifeguard. And oh, shit. whenever there was like clouds and thunder, and lightning we had to take we had to blow the whistle and evacuate like sometimes like 2,000 people from the oh pool. shit oh my boy because we didn't want anybody getting electrocuted what beach was that uh coney island oh like in the movies my boy you're yeah, out there you were a lifeguard at coney you got a wonder wheel what a pretty kind of colorful shorts, life. What kind of shorts they made you wear? Short shorts or that oh, regular man. long shorts? Baywatch. <laughs> the ones, the, yeah, like, like Baywatch. The 80s, like the 80s you know, NBA shorts? Yeah. How short? You know, like if you watch the, the yeah, like the Baywatch. You oh, know, my like God. The really tight, the Speedos. Okay. That sucks. The Speedos were the official uh, orange and green lifeguard. Driving colors. up and down the, you had a, a Jeep or something? You had a hey, truck? You know what? We always got the attention of the girls. Oh, so. my boy. <laughs> I'm t- Coney Island. Best six years of my life. 
life their own, their working own as a lifeguard. Track. I didn't even know yeah. that. Yeah. We, he never told us stories this. that I can't even talk about on this station because there's probably like kids listening. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. Well, you know, uh, speaking of lightning, our next story is a little tragic, though. You know, so like I said, you know, sometimes it, it's fun and games, but our next one, uh, we go to El Salvador. Oh yeah, man! There was a twenty-year-old, uh, twenty-two-year-old surfer, Catherine Diaz, was killed by lightning while training for a oh, is qualifier. That the Olympic, right? Something yeah, like, well, Olympic. yeah. Well, she was training for a qualifier for the Tokyo Olympics. Actually, International Surfing Association's World Surf Games. Oh man! That she was gonna uh, compete in to qualify. Yeah, because Tokyo starts in a few, few couple of months. And she had a good chance. People were saying like, oh yeah, she was going to ace it. So she was out there just, you know, she warming training, up. Yep. She was training in El Salvador. She was surfing by her home in El Tunco. It's a neighborhood uh, one hour south of San Salvador. Okay. And her uncle Beto Diaz was with her when she was struck. And she, he said she died instantly. And he mm. says that the weather was clear and there was no storm had been uh, no storm had been forecast. Right, because you know as surfers they know they know yeah. when to get out of the water. You know what's uh, you know what's sad? She was a chef and had even started her own business. I mean, it was more than just surfing. She she was a very talented young woman. Yep, she started surfing at the age of nine years old, and she was also like you said a, a great chef who had a mm. restaurant in that area. Her brother is Jose Diaz. He is the president of the El Salvador Surfing Federation. Oh, that's why wow. she was doing it, right? She she studied as a young kid. You know, her uncle's doing it. You know, you told me that when the she lightning struck, it. It, it made a circle or something around her in the water. Well, there's like a little, it charges around, around that area. So if you're like, even if you're, it doesn't hit you directly, if it hits near you and you're happen to be with your, in a surfboard with your feet on the water. Oh, you're gonna right, get... right. No, I see what you're saying. How, yeah, yeah how, how uh, water conducts electricity. So I, it didn't, it doesn't even have to strike you directly. Just as long as it gets within like 20 water. feet of you in the water, in like the water. you're done. I wonder if you're on top oh. of the surfboard. Isn't that like boom? The electricity won't oh, go through there. But you're, yeah. Ooh. I don't know. I'm, I'm telling you, I it's, it's get so tragic. The water is still touching you, and the water's already has electricity. Oh, because you're wet. You're yeah, you're wet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you know, so it's gonna you know. conduct anyway. Wow. So you know, let's talk a little bit about lightning itself. You know, from what we we studied a little bit, we looked it up. You know, a single uh, bolt of lightning or a lightning strike is made up of several hundred million volts. <laughs> and it can travel at the speed of light. That's what it travels at. So, I mean, people that survive these lightning strikes, that's insane. Sometimes people survive. You know, it, like how many people die per year? What, it's uh, 6,000 to 24,000 people die a year Damn. around the world. And in, Cal in an America, Damn. it's uh, 49 per year. It averages out to die from lightning strikes in America. I'm pretty sure a bunch of those are golfers. Yeah, you were talking about that because of the, the golf, golf clubs are conductive. That makes sense. Yeah, because they're out there and they don't, they don't want to get out. And yeah, they're they they privileged. They're like, they're oh, they're... fuck the science. <laughs> and you got, well, the new clubs are... Not, Fiberglass. Yeah, are, they're not metal, metal, metal. That uh, graphite the, fiber. The, some of the drivers are still kind of, well, not... not you're still around same. trees, so yeah, you're still so exposed. Anyway, I still don't want to take that chance. You know, and you know what? You know it's wild. Uh, the majority of lightning is called cloud to cloud, but twenty five percent of it is cloud to ground. That's where you know it comes down from the sky to the ground. Damn. Hmm. So okay. So most of the time it's clouds to clouds when you see it in the sky, the flash and then the boom, boom thunder. Yeah. You, you know where the capital of uh, lightning in the world is? Where? Central Africa. No shit. Central Africa. I mean, z z z z z they know over there though. You know. So I'm just saying. You know. Uh, so the question is, how many times can you be struck by lightning and survive? What do you think? What's Twice. the lucky number? <laughs> seven. Well, yeah, you hit it on the nose, well, my boy. Seven's well, a lucky number. That's why I said seven. Well, lucky number seven. Well, let's talk about the runner-up to lucky number seven. His name is Melvin Roberts. <laughs> oh, so there was somebody who got hit seven times? Yeah, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> number two. Up, I can't believe The runner-up was hit six times. Six and, times, wow. And he made headlines in 2011. God hates that guy. But how do we prove that he got hit six times? I could say I got hit three times. Will people believe me? Well, that's funny because his wife said he got struck actually ten times. <laughs> and, and they're debating it, saying, no, the four times we can't prove, but six times it can prove because in 2011 lightning a lightning rod got struck and then that went to his watch like a he had a big metal watch struck him he went to the hospital you know but the winner of it though is a man that they call the human lightning rod his name is roy cleveland sullivan and you know this dude was a park ranger at shenandoah national park in virginia 
But you know, your boy was stuck how many times? Struck how many times? Six, seven times? Seven times, my boy. Yeah, but you know, the other guy was struck ten times, according no, to No, no, no. He was really, they're saying six times. According how the hell to the do mom. You, how do you get hit so many times by lightning? Like, what, like well, well, this guy was. He, was he a storm chaser or what? No. <laughs> he was a, a park ranger in a very uh, makes sense. conductive part of the forest out there. You know, there's a lot of electrical activity. And, well, here's the thing. You know how he died? He didn't die from uh, lightning. He died from a gunshot wound. And even more tragic, he took his own life. Uh, I was going to say an aftershock. You're right. No, yeah, my boy, he had a heavy karma. What from made all, him kill himself? Get, getting struck seven times by lightning. He was like, fuck boy, that. I am going to walk out of this apartment. He's like, it's cool, my boys. I'm done. Really? He's checking That's out, so you know. Sad. I'm just I wonder saying. if it's pain. It's very. It's got. It's got to be real painful, right? Oh, I'm, dude. Because I've been shocked and it's like, oh. Well, you know, Melvin Roberts, the, you know what he said in 2011 when he got shot? Are shocked. He said that uh, it was the feeling of like if you're in a microwave. That's what he would compare it to. How does he know, how, know, how does he know what being in a microwave feels. is like? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? Hey, you know, do you guys ever remember when you were a kid, uh, Ben Franklin and the kite? You know, when he would fly that kite with the key on it and trying yeah, to do the those electrical. Yeah, the image of him with a kite with a key on it. Yeah. Well, you know, there's some truth. There's some truth to that. You know, bell system, bell phone system. Well, you know, at a certain point in time, Ben Franklin he sold his printing house, his newspaper, all of his stuff because he was uh, obsessed by electricity, and he got into it. So you know, he went outside, you know, to try to do these experiments. You know, from the Pennsylvania Gazette, what it's uh, 1752, October 19th. This is what old Ben said. He said, electric fire thus obtained, spirits may be kindled. You know, he was into that stuff. They already had cocaine at that time. Right? <laughs> no, yeah, they did too. <laughs> okay, so he, uh, that explains a lot. Well, you know, he made a simple kite from a handkerchief. He put a piece of wire attached to the top of the kite that acted as a lightning rod. And then what he did was that he connected a long um, string of hemp, hemp cord. But it was wet hemp cord. And then oh, that connected to the to key. Conduct. Yeah, and then it, that's that key that you see in the drawings all the time. And then to that, he had a little jar called a Leyden jar. And then finally, he had a silk string. And the reason being is that uh, wet hemp cord conducts electricity. But silk doesn't. So he'd, he'd hold on to the silk. That's odd. And why? the idea was I that... The, why. And so you know what? Like, people say he, he got struck by lightning. It was struck... It, he, he didn't get struck by lightning. He would die. What would happen was that the static Stung. the static electricity in the air, the ambient charge, would go through the, the rod on the kite, it would go down the wet hemp cord, and it would go into that jar, it's called a Leyden jar. And what a Leyden jar is, is this little jar that's a glass oh, jar with metal on the outside, metal on the inside, a little water on the inside, and a metal stopper going down. And what would happen is the electricity would go down and be a, Held or contained? Discharge, with, it no, it, it would be held in this little jar. You know, it got so famous in the 1700s that people would go around doing these experiments with it, and they were called electricians. And they do these experiments with that little jar. But you know how they would test it? They would kill animals. They would discharge the jar, the electricity, onto animals and birds. It was famous in the 1700s. Well, there's a famous, <laughs> there's a famous uh, video of Edison electrocuting an elephant on YouTube. You could see. But that was because he was trying to prove that AC was bad and DC was better. You know, that's funny because your boy Edison. Uh, <laughs> your boy Edison. <laughs> from Guadalajara. Guadalajara? That's a, that was a, there's a rumor he's from Mexico. Yeah. No, there's a, there's a. There's even a plaque down there's there. There's a plaque down there. But there's one more thing I'll tell you guys about that you've heard of too. St. Elmo's Fire. You've heard of that thing, the, the famous St. Elmo's TV Fire. Show. Yeah, it was a TV show. You know a movie saying? too, right? <laughs> it was a movie. But you know what that really is? That's when a sizable electric charge builds up like on a tall building or a street lamp or something or, or a ship mast. You know what I'm saying? And back in the day, famous authors would write about it because on uh, during thunderstorms, the sailors would say that the, the ship mast would turn blue from the discharge of the electrical activity. And that's where they get the term St. Elmo's Fire. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So... Considering that it's a lightning season out there, folks, you might want to be careful. You know. Yeah, stay out of the, out of the golf courses and stay out of the ocean. You can see a lot of clouds. Be smart. Like, yeah. <laughs> look around. You look at your environment. Read your environment. Stay away from trees. Stay away from stay trees. In the water. But you know what? We we don't want you to stay away from is the like button and the subscribe button or our channel. Make sure you uh, like <laughs> us and check out our other exactly. other uh, podcasts. All right. Oh,
ऑडियो में सा